question. I thought the questions were right but there. But where's the little Kit Kat question? Yeah. Oh, it's recording. Oh, the monkey can oh, ride! Okay, I can ride. Oh. Hello, everybody. Hey, everybody. Good to be with you today. I hope we're going to have some fun. State your name, position, and company. So, my name is Matt Watts, and I want to tell you a lot of artists, they'll work for a company, and then on the side, they'll have their own business. So, my own business is called Matt Watts Art, LLC. And then I also work at another place called Digital Gravy Animation, and that's in Tooele. My position at Digital Gravy is that I'm a character animation supervisor. I make sure that when people are animating, that it looks good. I'll tell you one thing that doesn't look good. When you're in the computer, you move things around like this, and if a person's waving and it looks like this, it looks really stiff and weird. So, so it's my job to say, no, when you move, make an action, the whole body should move a little bit. You should do a little bit of this foreshortening. People don't just live their life walking around like this from the side. And so uh, that's my job to get more life into it and to help them to get there. I also teach. Um, how to use the computer program that we use. It's called Toon Boom Harmony. We also use Photoshop a lot for some of the design work and coloring. And I also do rigging. Rigging, that sounds kind of weird, right? Rigging is when you cut up a cartoon character and you put it in the computer and then you can move the different parts around. Or maybe you draw like a hundred different hands for different positions and stuff. Something that's important when you're doing rigging, I'll have to show you a picture in the video, but there's a bunch of complicated things. And if you can get really good at doing math and seeing why different things happen, and if you can go and rescue X when you're in algebra, find out what X equals, then you'll be even better at doing some of this more technical kind of stuff. So there's a lot of art stuff that I do and also a lot of technical stuff that I do so the art can work. Briefly describe what led you to your current job. So ever since I was a kid, I have loved doing art. And so I went to school and I, in college, I did architecture because I like math and art. And then I learned that it wasn't really what I loved, buildings. I really like cartoons. And so then I tried my hardest to learn how to draw cartoons better. That's what led me to this career is it's just what I love to do. <laughs> What education or schooling did you have to go through for your current job? So I went to the University of Utah. I got my four year bachelor's degree in architecture and that didn't really help me be an animator, but my real schooling, I went to like Salt Lake Community College for a couple of art classes for figure drawing and painting and character design. And then I just read tons and tons and tons of books. And then something else that was really important is I don't know if you guys have ever heard of Comic Con, but they make these fun conventions where you dress up as a superhero. Everybody gets together and has fun and talks to artists and comic book people and writers. And so that was a place where I met some people that had animated on TV shows. And they looked at my stuff and they told me what I could do better. And then I would try to get better. And then the next year I would show them again and then they would keep helping me to get better. So that was kind of what my real education was. And it was kind of harder than if I just went to a school that was for animation. That would have been an easier way to go. What are your long-term career goals? My long-term career goals, I already hit them. So now what do I do? I don't know. I lived my dream. I got to animate on a Disney cartoon. I work for a company. I get to animate almost every day. I'm just having so much fun, but my goal is to always keep getting better. I could get better at drawing people. I could get better at drawing animals. I could get better at making like run cycles for wolves. You know, there's tons of stuff that I can keep learning. What does an average day look like for you? Ooh, I get up, I try to exercise before I go to work if I can, that makes me feel really good. And then I go to work on my computer. I have to walk all the way down the hall to get to work. <laughs> and then I, um, I do some animation. I'd say probably about half of my day I'm doing animation and then half of my day I'm trying to help other people or teach other people how to do things because I'm supervising them and helping them to get better. Um, and then uh, I work in Tooele for Digital Gravy 
and that is about an hour and 15 minute drive from here. And so I will go down there and it's a really pretty drive and there's lots of awesome people there, but I go there like once a week and then the rest of the days I get to work from home. How do you use technology in your career? Whoa, behold! <laughs> okay, how many computer screens do you see? One, three. two, three, right? Uh -huh. And I'm recording this on a phone that's also a screen. And then I'm also, I've got like a, an iPad in here. So I use technology as much as I possibly can to make my job easier. Like, let me give you one example. Sometimes if I need to draw something in 3D, I can um, like make a model of a 3D thing and then I can move the camera and figure out what I need to draw and then I can draw it. This is also great. Use some paper and pencil to draw. Sometimes I draw here and I scan it in, and then I'll color it and do all the fancy stuff on the computer. So yeah, I use tons of technology for my job. Let me tell you one more example that's really weird. There's a number, It's a number is called pi. Isn't that a weird number? Well, I know that. And it's, what, do you know what the number is? There's a lot of different ones. 3.14, and then there's a whole bunch of numbers that come after it. And so anyways, um, Pi Day is March 14th. And so one day when I was at work, it was Pi Day, and I needed to animate the van, and it was gonna drive off of the screen, but I wanted to make sure that the tires were turning just right so that it didn't look like the tires were just like slipping. So I actually used the formula C circumference equals two pi R. I used that math formula to figure out how fast those things should turn so that it looked right. And I did that on pi day, I used pi. So I thought that was kind of funny. What is the best part of your job? I love animating. When I can bring a character to life, it is so much fun to me. I worked on the Tangled cartoon series, as you can see here, and that was a Disney show. I also worked on Kid Cosmic. That's a new show that's on Netflix. It just started this month. Animating Rapunzel was probably one of the, my favorite things to do. And then my other favorite thing to do is to just animate anything that I think is funny. I want people to laugh. That's my goal. What <laughs> hobbies and interests do you have that are compatible with your field of work? Uh, I like to sculpt. I like to paint with real paint in real life, but I also love doing a bunch of like digital painting on the computer. I like reading art books. I love watching movies and I love watching behind the scenes stuff of how they made movies. That is really fun to me. And I also like playing board games. What advice would you give to students in finding a career they love? There's gonna be things that you like to do and I bet you sometimes your brothers or sisters or your mom or dad are gonna say, wow, you're so good at cooking. One of my kids loves to do contortion. And so bending around all over the place in gymnastics, I would say, see what you love to do. Like sit down and write your favorite things to do. And then ask somebody that does that as their job, how do you get into that? And that's gonna be a great way to go. I'm so thankful and blessed to have a job as an animator. Okay, now this part is gonna be questions that you all sent in. How do you do animations and how do you edit them? You know, some people like to draw it on paper and I like to do that, okay? Here, I wanna show you what I like. So look, I drew these with a pencil and then it's cool, this animation board, you have these little pegs that keep it all in place. So then you can flip back and forth to see if that movement is looking okay. I'll show you, this is a light box. So I can turn the light on and I can kind of trace through, but I, I honestly don't trace a whole bunch. I'd say 90% of the time I'm using this, I have the light turned off. I'm just flipping back and forth to see if the motion is coming in. All right, so, but you, if you want to learn how to do it, you could even just get yourself a clipboard and clip it in here. And as long as the papers are lined up, you can start drawing stuff here on the edge and you can flip it back and forth and that'll work for you. Pretty much just like making a flip book. Now that's how to make animation on paper. And then I use a program on the computer, it's called Toon Boom Harmony. And that's the program that is used for a lot of cartoons you see on TV today. And, uh, and in that program, you have a bunch of like, they're called puppets. 
you cut them all out and they have little rotation points for their arms and you draw a whole bunch of hands for them and maybe you draw some different links and mouths but you could reuse a ton of stuff if uh if the director doesn't like it all that you've done is moved a puppet around and so you can just redo it you can change it's called keyframes they're little pieces of information where you say this is going to have this much rotation it's going to go up and down this much it's going to squash this much and so you can just go back and change those things back in the old days if you're drawing it you'd have to totally redraw the whole thing i want to become the best animator can you teach me some hints and tricks <laughs> i would say to be the best animator you need to study real life a lot okay like i said you need to use reference when you're drawing people you need to know where all those muscles are and where everything moves from everything needs to feel real like if you're gonna move like feel it in your body what happens when you do this well my body goes down a little bit and then it comes back up my head goes down a little bit and it comes back up and then like my arms, this one comes out and that one stays back. You know, like you have to think of everything and how it moves together. Feel it. I remember one time I had a scene where somebody was knocking on a door and people are like, oh, that'll be a piece of cake because it was just a hand knocking on a door. I said, no, no, no. You need to take video reference of a hand knocking on a door because watch what happens. This happens so fast, but what happens is the hand goes up and it comes down and boom, it hits. And then it comes back up and it boom it hits it's not just i had to animate somebody climbing a power pole i have no idea how they do that i'm not a monkey and <laughs> so they they strap it around the pole and i found on youtube i just like video captured what they had done and then i watched it in slow motion and then i was able to animate it just fine again use reference that's the biggest thing i'll tell you and then the second biggest thing you got to practice, 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 practice until your hands hurt and your wrists are gone and rotten and you can't even breathe anymore. Oh, okay. no. How long does it take to animate a whole movie? What I've heard, Years. I haven't worked on a full movie myself. But I think that it usually takes three to four years to animate a full movie like Frozen, Moana. I know that that's how long it was taking them to do like Beauty and the Beast and Lion King back in the 90s. It's thousands of pictures. Every minute of animation you see, there's 24 frames is what they call it. There's 24 pictures you see in every single second. Sometimes they could get away with doing just 12. You, um, when it's moving slow, you, can, you don't have to draw quite as many. Let me just give you an idea of the process. First, somebody writes the story, then they have to make sure that's the right story and it looks good. They draw some rough pictures, it's called an animatic. You can also call that storyboarding, it kind of goes together. And then they make sure that it's looking good with really rough, sketchy pictures. Then they get the, the professional people to record their voices. And next, they do character design to make sure that the characters look really nice and appealing and fun and unique. Then you have somebody that does color, you have somebody that does backgrounds, and then you have the animators that actually start animating it and making it move. Then you have people that are going to do like effects, explosions, water, hair, dresses, stuff like that. And finally, you have compositors. What they do is they put it all together. They put the background in there, they put the characters in there, they put the explosions, they put the lighting all over, they put textures. Like these are, if you ever watch the end of credits, uh, some of my kids really like watching the credits and seeing all the funny names, but uh, um, you will see tons of people on any animated movie. And so, yeah, action. it takes a lot longer than people think. Do you do YouTube videos? I do do YouTube videos. <laughs> Sorry, I do do. The YouTube videos that I make that are most popular is when I'm showing how to do Toon Boom Harmony stuff. It's a lot of fun. But there's a lot of people that have questions about it because there's a lot of tricky parts. And I also make my own cartoons sometimes and I put them on there. They're really short because like we talked about earlier, animation takes a long time. How do you like earn money from animating? That's a really good question. Uh, I'll tell you, there was one time that somebody said, hey, can you draw me a, a nice picture of me and my family? It took me 20 hours and they paid me like $40. So how much was I making per hour? 
Two dollars? Like two dollars an hour. So can I survive on that? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> I could barely buy Minecraft with that much money. What? I'd only get 20 months. So what I'm saying is to earn money at it, you've got to get really good at it. And then you need to make friends who have jobs there that know how to make money at it. Like you could be really amazing at something, but if you don't show it to people, uh, you won't get well known. Let me tell you one thing that's really important if you want to get really good at your stuff and make a lot of money is you need to do social media. So when you grow up and you can have all these social media accounts, Facebook, Instagram, all of these things, you try to put out pictures or animation, or if you're a dancer, maybe you take a video of you dancing and you post it like three times a week and then you get a bunch of people to follow you. You guys know this stuff, you're on YouTube, right? You see all these followers and subscribe. And uh, the more of that that happens, the better known you get. And then people, when they're trying to find somebody to do a project, they think, oh yeah, I know that girl. She knows how to do that stuff. I'm gonna go ask her how much she would charge me to do it. And so that's how to earn money doing it. But for a lot of the time, you have to just do it because you love it and eventually, if you do it enough times and people see it, they'll finally be willing to pay you for it and hire you to do it. But don't skip that step. You have to do it for free for a little while just for yourself. And sometimes you'll have to take a job that doesn't pay you very much. And after a while, they'll say, hey, this person's really good. We'd hate to lose them. We'll pay them more. And it does happen. So, all right. All of you, it's been so much fun. Thanks for hanging out. I hope that you have fun. And next year, if you have any more questions, send them along or ask my kids. Okay. See ya.